Even as I'm looking at the Six of Wands here, yes, it's in reverse and it's representing minor defeat right now. It's not a huge thing. There's still victory that can be gained from it. Again, something may have flopped or failed or not have gone the way that you had expected or wanted or desired for it to go. And that may be something that you're needing to cut out of the process, but it's still not like an overall tragic defeat. Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to Morning Coffee, your collective tarot reading. Yes, thank you all so very much for tuning in. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. My sage is going a little crazy today. There must be some crazy energies going on because the sage is acting up, y'all. Anyway, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already. And I always, as always, I encourage you guys to let me know down in the comments section below how this resonates for you, yeah? Because this is Divine Conversation, so let's have a conversation about it, yeah? All right, y'all, uh, we're just gonna get into this today. We're gonna get into this here. Uh, I'm using the Witches Tarot today for our main deck and then I believe I'm going to be using the after tarot again for our clarification and then as always we will cross the oracle guidance bridge at the end of the reading when we get there yeah all right kids let's get into this and see what we've got for today's collective tarot reading here we go Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, five shuffles here. One, also um, having a little bit of allergy troubles today. Just so you know. Okay, this is one for the collective. What do we have going on for the collective today? Please, Spirit, what messages do you want to bring forward for us today? This is two for our collective tarot reading. What do you want to discuss with the collective today? This is three. This is four. And this is five. All righty, kids. Let's see what we've got going on for today. What do you want to discuss with the collective today, please, Spirit? our morning coffee session. All right. Okay, so uh, we have the chariot at the bottom of the deck here. And then the first card that uh, flipped over, it is the magician. All right, so we're in master manifester mode, just like yesterday's reading. Uh, I already feel like I want to direct you guys to yesterday's reading because it already feels like it's going to be similar. Card can be found in the top right of your screen. You will also be able to find a link to that reading, which was in fact titled uh, Great Change, Your Life Will Never Be the Same. That also, a link to that can be found in the description box, also in the pinned comment along with the timestamps. Okay. But it's today, it seems like we are discussing this manifestation mode a little bit further here. Um, okay. Oh. Okay. Um, you have the... We have a number of cards here already. And uh, please bear with me because I'm trying to make sense of all of it. Because it feels like... 
you're needing to make a decision right now in terms of this manifestation. I feel, I feel like you've, aha, okay, it's interesting because what I was just about to say, to say was I feel like you've come a little bit down the road so far. You've got some momentum going or at least you've gotten the process started and it seems that you're, it, it, it may, it kind of feels like you've hit a little bit of a speed bump, a little bit, maybe a little bit of a blockage. There's something that you're needing to cut out of, something that you're needing to cut out of your process. The one thing that did come out, it fell out, I don't, I don't even, okay, okay. I was, I was just about to say, I don't even know if I want to take this. It came out face down where all the rest of the cards came out face up and it's reversed. It's the Six of Wands. Um, with the Six of Wands, I'm hearing minor defeat. Okay, uh, but take that with a grain of salt. I really don't feel like, I, I really don't feel like you've been defeated here. I feel like there is something, there's a hiccup, there's a bump in the road, or there's a, it's, a, it's almost as if you're like fine tuning what it is you're manifesting um, as you go along this process. So, even as I'm looking at the Six of Wands here, yes, it's in reverse, um, and it's representing minor defeat right now. Uh, it's not a huge thing. There's still victory that can be gained from it. Again, something may have flopped or failed or not have gone the way that you had expected or wanted or desired for it to go, and that may be something that you're needing to cut out of the process, but it's still not like an overall tragic defeat. I feel like there's still some sort of victory that's going to come through. It's just maybe delayed or um, I don't I, I don't even want to I really don't even believe that it's delayed because it's all part of the process. It's like you're going through, you're manifesting, all right? You're working on manifesting, okay? You have momentum going in this manifestation. You have the magician with the 3 of wands, okay? And so as you as you continue to move down this path, um, okay, as you continue to move down this path of manifestation, you have an idea or you have a feeling that you're, that you're going after, that you're trying to create, and you're focusing on the feeling. And that feeling brings up different options as to how this situation can manifest or how this situation can work out or elements of this situation that can end up being a solid part of your manifestation. And so because there are these different options that come through as you're working with the feeling aspect of this, you try certain things and you find, mm, okay, I'm doing that, but that doesn't seem to work, okay? And I just heard back to the drawing board, but it's not like you're starting over completely. You're going back to the drawing board and you're assessing. You're saying, okay, I know we're going in this direction, right? I know we're going in this certain direction, okay? Uh, and I'm trying certain things. We tried this thing, mm, not really giving me the results that I want. Okay, back to the drawing board in, se in the sense of, do we reshape this, do we revamp this, or do we cut it out completely? And that's where the Queen of Swords comes into play. I feel like there are some elements that you are actually, you are actually cutting out here. This isn't, this isn't the King of Swords energy. This is the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords here, she is feeling like a, a good level of discernment, but it's discernment not with intentions to understand, it's discernment to, with intentions to cut out the fluff or cut out the superfluous aspects of the situation, to cut out what is not ultimately getting you to your destination. And that's why I feel like even though the Six of Wands is here and it's in reverse, it's not complete defeat. It is an overall victory because ultimately whatever it is you're cutting out or removing from the situation is going to continue to lead down the path. There is victory coming. And I want to remind you that at the bottom of the deck, you do have the chariot. But then underneath the chariot is the ten of wands to judgment, uh, to, nine, to the nine of swords, and then the world. Okay, so, um, so as you go through this process, you guys, of moving forward towards what it is that you want... There are certain elements that are just superfluous, that are just not necessary, that are not pertinent or relevant or or beneficial or whatever to the situation. There are some things that are burdening you, that are bogging you down. There are some aspects of this situation that you just don't need to handle or you just don't need to focus on because it's just too much. 
and 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 see this is also with judgment here this is also why even though this is like a minor setback i guess you could call it that i, I mean i'm having trouble really putting this into words i don't really have an appropriate phrase for this but we'll call it a minor setback okay that's there's still a victory here because ultimately what it is you're working on clearing out or like like trimming the fat even with the queen of swords it's helping you it's helping you rise above. It's helping you move towards what it is you're being called to. And it's helping you get into greater alignment with whatever this manifestation is for you. Now, there are there is fear here because with the Nine of Swords, because some of you are like, holy shit, is this really even going to work out? Like, what 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 does this mean, spirit? And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't 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 fall into this. All right. Don't let your mind start running amok and creating all sorts of worst case scenarios and all that stuff ultimately this is going to work out you're reaching completion here with the world and what the world is representing is not necessarily an ending of the situation in this state in this in this reading or for this feeling here the world is representing the actual completion of what it is you're trying to manifest the ultimate goal here here to me the world is representing at least in this moment the world is representing the the complete aspect of it ultimately what it's meant to turn out to be, okay? You're you're moving forward towards this. I'm hearing you're reaching this, okay? Do not let your mind start running amok and, and creating worst case scenario, scenarios or like causing you to hit some sort of downward spiral where now all of a sudden your emotions are getting the best of you and, and things are just going haywire, right? Don't let that happen. It's an illusion. It's an illusion, you guys. This is all part of the process. Now, Moving forward here, you have four more cards that have all fallen face up. You have the Sun with the Three of Cups, the Empress, but then also the Seven of Swords, okay? Um, there is an element to this that is collective, that has a collective feeling to it, and that's coming from the Three of Cups. And what you're starting to realize, I believe, with the Sun here is how you actually align with a, a group of people or a, a, maybe a certain collective belief. Uh, I kind of, in some cases, I kind of want to say the hive mind mentality. And when I talk, and, and often the three of cups represents the hive mind, a, rep, can represent a hive mind mentality. What does that mean? Well, in my opinion, as a reader, the hive mind mentality is a certain core or group of beliefs that a large number or a group of people, I mean, a group of people technically would be more than one person, right? So you, at least two people, okay. But a number of people have all agreed upon this one belief, this one feeling, this one aspect, this one understanding. And that's not a bad thing, okay? Uh, technically, that's how this, how our world runs, like how our, how our, um, how this world runs. So like when you first, before you incarnated into this life, you chose to accept certain elements of a belief system in life in order to work with, live in, grow and expand as a soul in this incarnation, right? Okay, but that doesn't mean that you're completely 100% subject to that for the whole life. It's not like, you know, you agree to um, to assimilate into certain things and now you're stuck there for the rest of your existence. No. At this like at this point, you 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 reach an understanding, you get the, you reach a point where you're like, okay, do I want to continue rolling with that, vibing with that? Do I want to continue believing in that or not? And that's actually also part of what judgment is representing here, because I feel like in this part of the situation or for this reality or this situation for you, you're reaching a point where you're like, okay, there are certain elements to this collective mindset that I'm not sure I vibe with any longer. Queen of Swords. And you're, you're literally, <laughs> Excuse me, guys. You are literally weighing that, weighing what this is, what these people believe, or what this collective mindset is against what your path is, the trajectory that you're moving on, or the momentum that you have going so far, and where you want to take that momentum, okay? In the long run, ultimately, I feel like this 
this Six of Wands here is going to turn upright. And the thing about the Six of Wands when it came out was it fell out face down. Okay, so that's kind of an internal hidden aspect here. Okay. Now, with this, you have the Sun, the Empress, and the Seven of Swords. So I feel like in this situation, you guys, you I, you you have, or at least in for this reading, whether this is related to yesterday's reading or not, for this session, it feels like there are certain elements of this collective energy that you're starting to realize do not resonate with you. And you're starting to realize the deception in it. And part of this deception I'm feeling specifically, now this could be specific or this could be a metaphor. Take it as it resonates because this is a general reading. But there was an element here thinking that if, if the only way that you were going to be allowed be able to be abundant or in the flow was if you had you you absolutely had to believe or or resonate with what this element was whatever the three of cups element was whatever this community or hive mind situation was but that was deceptive and you're starting to see that with the sun there's uh, the sun is also representing victory yes but it's representing your deeper aspects, your your soul. So I feel like in this, in for this reading here, you are elements of this hive mind energy or this collective energy are actually serving to put you into greater alignment with who it is you truly are or what it is you truly want. And the sun is illuminating the deceptive aspects here that are helping you to realize just how abundant you are. Okay, and that's another reason why I feel like this Six of Wands energy is going to turn upright eventually once you once you clarify or understand this for yourself, okay? Okay. Let's uh let's get some clarifying going. I definitely want to clarify the Six of Wands. I also want to clarify this Three of Cups and potentially even the Seven of Swords, but we'll get there in a second. Let's talk about this. Uh, I'm going to give this, this is the um, after tarot. I'm going to give this three shuffles and we're going to get some clarity here. Yeah. One. Two. And three. All right. I definitely want to clarify the Six of Wands first, yes? So what is the Six of Wands in reverse for the collective, please, Spirit? What is the Six of Wands? The Eight of Cups. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Yeah, look, wow. Oh my God. At the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Swords, you guys. This is perfect, look. So the Eight of Cups came out here, right? Uh, something isn't working out for you. Something isn't right for you. Something isn't in the best alignment for you here. And I feel like there was an element here of trying to appease the collective somehow or a group of people somehow or a certain mindset, a collective mindset somehow. And you're recognizing here that that just not, does not work for you. So there is something that you're going to have to leave behind because look at what else came out here. And it literally... This next card that came out, it fell out on the Seven of Swords and the Sun. It's the Seven of Swords again. Okay. And then with the Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck, damn, the Ace of Swords to the Queen of Swords. You guys, this is all about you connecting with yourself. Underneath the Queen of Swords is the Two of Cups. And yes, you. Uh, uh, this definitely has energies of being involved with some sort of community here. Again, I just heard a hive mind mentality, so okay. Um, and that could just be like your friends or your family, maybe even your immediate family. I did hear your immediate family. Um, uh, colleagues, coworkers, whatever. But this is all about connecting with yourself. It's not about connecting with the, with the collective or appeasing some sort of group of people or a mindset just because that's what people are settled on right now. I mean, if that works for you, if that resonates for you, then do that. But it seems like in this situation, it does not resonate for you, okay? And it's something that you need to cut out because something about it is deceptive. Or it could just be the Seven of Swords energy represents that it's just not in alignment with you. So it's almost as if you're trying to sell 
gosh, I don't like saying this, but there's almost an energy of like selling out in a way because it's, but only because it's not authentic to you. It's not your vibe. Okay. So there's no reason for you to waste your energy and follow through with it because it's burdensome. You are being asked 10 of wands as you move on this path with the chariot, the 10 of wands and the judgment here, you are being asked to release the superfluous aspects. You are being asked to release or rise above from the aspects that you may have been requiring yourself to, 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 to take a hold or carry whatever. You're being asked to drop that so that you can be more authentic. You can be more real. You can be, you could be doing what is true to you, ace of swords. Wow, guys. Okay, um, let's talk about the Three of Cups then. What is this collective energy, this hive mind mentality? What is the Three of Cups for the collective the spirit? What is the Three of Cups for the collective? Ah, yep. That's very interesting. Five of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. So it seems that you've been trying to connect with the collective in a way that appeases them because of a sense of lack of mentality, feeling left out in the cold, maybe even FOMO syndrome. What's FOMO? FOMO is fear of missing out. So it's like you're, you've been observing what's going on in the world and being like, yeah, well, I could do that. Yeah, I could get in on that, this, that, and the third. It's like, but is that really who you are? You're, the collect This three of cups energy is clarified by the moon in reverse with the eight of pentacles, okay? And the moon here in reverse is representing the, recogni the recognition of the illusion. The illusion, it's no longer in it. You see it clearly, especially since the sun also came out here, right? So the sun is definitely representing illumination of what could be a truer element, what could be a truer path, what could be a truer expression for your soul, right? Because remember, when I was channeling from the sun, I was getting your soul, the, 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 the core aspect of who you are in within, right? As an energetic being in this physical reality. The illusion has been broken. The illusion has been seen through. This is not, no, what you have been working towards or how you have been working towards it, it, it doesn't have to be this way. And again, this is why this is representing, even though the Six of Wands is, re is reversed here, this is still representing a victory for you. Maybe it's a, uh, uh, what's the word, the phrase I'm looking for? Um, not a backhanded victory, not an inadvertent victory. It's like a, it's, it's like a, gosh, I don't, maybe, maybe you guys will, will pick up the term that I'm, that's not coming through right now, but it's like, it's a victory, but it doesn't necessarily look like it on the surface. Okay. It's a victory for your soul, right? All right, guys. So next, what I want to clarify is the seven, I'm sorry, the sun here. Well, before I do that, let's look at what's at the bottom of the deck. So remember, we were just clarified the Three of Cups, and we got the Moon in reverse with the Eight of Pentacles. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Five of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, Justice, and the Ten of Swords. To the Knight of Wands, okay? So it seems whatever it is you've been trying to provide here, Six of Pentacles, it was coming from a place, a place of lack mentality, of, quite frankly, not believing in your own personal sense of abundance, okay? Make, trying to be like everybody else in some, in some way. But there's justice coming into play here by ending that and moving forward with what actually inspires you, what it is your true calling is to move forward with. Okay, now let's clarify the Seven of Swords. Yes, what is the Seven of Swords for the collective Holy Spirit? bottom of the deck you've got the queen of swords again guys all right so yes the queen of swords is representing discernment but discernment with intentions of removing something from the equation the seven of swords is clarified first and foremost by the six of swords beautiful then to the four of wands okay so moving away from this cutting your losses I mean, the Six of Swords represents victory as well, yes, but it also represents victory that comes with sometimes a level of sacrifice. And 
quite honestly, even though it might feel like a blow to your ego because your ego was all like, no, we should do it this way. This is what resonates with people. And then your soul is like, but that's not who we are. So this might be a blow to your ego right now, but quite frankly, it's leading you towards greater self-sufficiency or greater stability in terms of your creative aspects or what it is you're trying to create here. What is coming from the truth of your soul? <laughs> Okay, the Seven of Wands is also clarified, clarified by the Two of Wands, but then one card that did fall face down, it's also reversed. It's the Queen of Wands. So the Queen of Wands in reverse here, having fallen face down, is an element that you weren't necessarily aware of, you weren't conscious of in the beginning. But now it's coming to light. The Queen of Wands in reverse is representing that you're not in alignment with whatever this was. And you have, and with this balance of masculine and feminine energy, this harmony, harmony within yourself, this is the only way, this is really the only reason why you're able to perceive it this way. Because you have a sense of connection with yourself that is allowing you, you have like a level of self-awareness that is allowing you to bring the two sides of you together and be like, okay, whoa, 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 wait a second, where are we going with this? Because the two of wands is about a choice. And in the after tarot, we have two individuals, masculine and feminine, who are whole and complete individuals. They have their own empires of their own that they are now bringing together to combine to make a, a, an even bigger empire, right? And so these two parts of yourself are coming together and be like, what is this? And you're recognizing, yeah, I'm not in alignment with that. I don't want that. I don't want to do that. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, this is really beautiful. Last thing I would do want to clarify for the collective here. Uh, I want to talk about the Empress then. So what's the Empress for the collective here, please, Spirit? Oh, shit. There it is. The Five of Pentacles again. So this was you... Or some, maybe even somebody in your life, take it as it resonates, but this is an element of someone trying to give to the collective from a place of feeling lack within. Okay, five of pentacles. But the empress is also clarified by the queen of pentacles and the devil. Again, a lack of self-worth. Allowing the devil, toxicity, codependency, attachment, destruction, destructive energies, whatever. Allowing that to influence what you provide to the collective, to the people around you, to your loved ones, to your significant others, to whomever. Whomever this is for you. Allowing toxic, codependent, low vibrational energies to dictate how you show up, to dictate what it is you provide when all along you know what you have to provide. You know what your worth is. And it's from this sense of lack of self-worth with the five of pentacles that the devil has been able to come in and be like, well, you know what? You need to do it this way. But that's not who you are. That's not your connection to the abundance of the universe. That's not the empress, the provider, the nurturer, the lover, the, the caregiver that you truly are. You are here in the queen of pentacles. And, and there is a sense of, there is a sense of self-worth here. It's like you don't, part of you, part of what made this a reality, part of the, what made this an element of your life or allowed the devilish energy to kind of get their hands in here and start fucking shit up for you was the fact that there is a level of your self-worth being placed on what it is you provide to this collective type energy. Instead of just being truly who you are and providing from that sense and letting people gravitate towards you. There was, there was a, the, okay, the Empress here is representing enablement. Is that the right? Enabling, enabling tendencies enabling individuals to stay in this toxic or low vibrational energy and providing to them from there instead of providing to them from the place that you know or from the being that you know that you are, the queen of swords. Oof, okay. 
actual now now wait hold on before i go any further uh one last card did come out here it is the high priestess she fell out face down and on top of the three of cups which was clarified by the moon in reverse and the, and the uh, eight of pentacles there is definitely a higher awareness here there is a higher process going on here and i do feel like you're going to be taken care of Everything is going to work out as long as you follow your intuition, as long as you follow this higher higher vibrational energy. Notice we did not get the Hierophant here, but we did get the Devil, okay? The Hierophant can kind of represent this type of energy too, but this is part of a process. Uh, as you're on your, your way moving forward, this is part of a process of you really getting into alignment with this higher awareness or these higher vibrations. Also, there's a level of mystery, mystery and the unknown. This is definitely, this is definitely a big step in your path in terms of spiritual awareness or um, spiritual expansion, expansion on a soul level, okay? This is, it's like this is an initiation for you to get into alignment with who you truly are and what it is you truly provide to you, the people around you, the collective, whomever, wh whomever these people are, okay? Or whatever this circumstance is. I, last thing that I want to clarify now that we've been talking about it is the Queen of Swords. Yeah? What's the Queen of Swords for the collective here, please, Spirit? Okay, we're back to the Two of Cups. Whoa. The Queen of Swords is literally saying to you, or is saying in this situation, through you, I guess we could say, is a better way of saying it. The Queen of Swords is saying through you that I know exactly who I am, and I am not going to sit here and focus on the external or the heartbreak because I will just be enabling you at that point. And that's never going to get you out of it. That's never going to get you because because some for, I know exactly who I am, but we've got people here that are in denial and are choosing to stay stuck in their heartbreak instead of healing it, instead of rising above, instead of working on it, instead of working on themselves or working on yourself or anything like that. And I am not going to enable you, the Empress in reverse. I am not going to enable that within you. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. The Queen of Swords has spoken, y'all. Yikes. Okay. I'm going to close out this reading. Originally, I was thinking I'm going to go with the uh, Crystal Mandala deck, but instead, we are actually going to go with the Lightworker Oracle for this reading. This feels very appropriate. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into this here, kids. Five shuffles. One. Closing Oracle Guidance. Two. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance to close out this reading for today's session, for today's collective tarot reading. There it is right there. Card number 37, the heart transmission. Your heart is capable of not only giving and receiving love, but connecting you to a great network of beings that resonate in the highest frequencies of divine love. Through your heart, you can receive information and guidance from networks of light that fill our universe. As you learn to open your heart to receiving those transmissions or these transmissions, your ability to work with group consciousness in a loving way increases. You shall affect humanity in a loving way, influencing the collective, rather than lowering your frequencies of the collective. I'm sorry, rather than lowering 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got all excited, but let's try that again. You shall affect humanity in a loving way, influencing the collective, rather than allowing the lower frequencies of the collective to overwhelm you. The devil and the ten of wands. Y'all, can't make this shit up, right? Woo! Let's see. I want to see if there's more in this three. Oh, y'all. Okay, I'm going to have to read this whole damn thing. So, sorry. Right. Hold on. Sorry, I had to handle my sinuses. But I want to read, I literally, I really feel like I want to read this whole card. So we're just going to get into it. Yep. Working with group energy is a leap on the spiritual path with risk but also great reward in terms of empowerment to manifest your life mission. The risk with group energy is mitigated when you approach it from the heart rather than the head. The mind can argue one point of view and then immediately and convincingly argue its opposite. The heart, however, either feels something resonates or it doesn't, whether or not there is a logical explanation for it. The mind can be seduced by those who tell you they have great spiritual power, but this will instantly trigger intuitive warning bells in your heart, for those with genuine power do not need to convince you of it. The heart is the key to deciding where you offer your devotion. When you offer devotion to the group consciousness that loves you unconditionally, your heart feels safe loved and an inner knowing of the rightness of that group for you, whether that group exists on the earthly plane or in a spiritual dimension. For as long as it gives you life, broadens your horizons, nourishes your truths, and empowers you to live your destiny, that group is serving you. If you do not experience these positive, positive effects, if you feel drained, confused, or that your issues are not resolved, resolving as you work with this group, Listen carefully to your heart and question whether it is needed. It is uh, question whether it is indeed the right place for you to be. It is important to also work with groups that you can serve. Although you may love your family, for example, they may not be the group you can best serve. Perhaps those who are open, willing, and receptive to your spiritual gifts are outside your family. Perhaps your family can benefit spiritually from you in a role of mother or son or daughter, but not in the role of spiritual mentor. On the other hand, some groups may want to feed off you, but not learn to do for themselves. They may wish for you to give them the answers to their problems. They may not be willing to develop the trust, courage, confidence, and empowerment that is required to take responsibility for their own relationship to the universe, which is needed so they can grow in soul wisdom through their life experiences. Your heart may guide you to withdraw your services from such people because you love them and want them to grow. Your heart will guide you to operate differently with different people. You may be guided to explore hobbies or interests that lead you to the next group that your presence can assist. The heart will always guide you when it is time to move on. The transition of the heart, I'm sorry, the transmission of the heart gives a truthful assessment of the interaction of your frequency with the frequency of a group. Is it diminished? This, then this is a spiritually constructive connection. Wait, the transmission of the heart gives a truthful assessment of the interaction of your frequency with the frequency of a group. Oh, is it mutually raised? Then this is a spiritual constructive, spiritually constructive connection. Is it diminished? This will not be so helpful. The heart empowers you to know when to work with others for how long and in what way. Trust it. The more you do, the more groups which can bring great benefit to you and to the planet can enter into your world. Let me say that one more time. The more you do, the more groups which can bring great benefit to you and to the planet can enter into your world. Well, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. 
Uh, again, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments section how this resonated for you. And as always, I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah!